This video is brought to you by Zarkin Productions, an umbrella group composed of over 10 YouTube shows, an archive of over 4,000 videos covering a wide variety of topics, and businesses both inside and outside of Second Life. Please go to Zarkin.com for a complete listing of media links, follow us on Facebook and Twitter for our activity feed, subscribe to us on YouTube for future updates and please support us on Patreon. Thank you for your time, and may I present another, Zarakin Production. Hello and welcome to Just Take Jerk, I am your host Andrew Carvin, we are playing The Investigator Cases. The Investigator Cases are an ongoing series of short point-and-click whodunits about an alligator who investigates crime. Follow Investigator Bobby Cap and his various faithful sidekicks as they investigate gruesome murders, interrogate suspects, collect clues, and finally accuse the murderer in the most dramatic fashion possible. We have two cases here. Uh, the first one... Investigator in the case of the unconventional weapon, and Investigator in the case of the red herring. So we're going to play the first one first. I'm sure glad you're here, Investigator, but I don't know if we needed you tonight. Seems like a pretty open and shut case to me. Here, I'll put the details in your case file. See if you agree. McGuffin the Puffin, male early 20s, found floating face down in his bathtub with his skull crushed. Background check didn't come up with anything besides a few speeding tickets. Pretty blameless guy by all accounts. He worked part-time at a local Panda Express. Hmm. Open and shut cases are often the most deceptive of all, Bobby Cat. By the way, who's that with you? Ah, uh, allow me to introduce my latest sidekick. His name is the Vanilla Chinchilla. I'm not your sidekick investigator. You know I'm only shadowing you for in internship credits. Please allow my sidekick and I to inspect the crime scene, Bobby Cat. Right you are, sir. So, there's the birdie. Stuff. Hey, stop it. Just looking at that. Okay. A toilet tank lid. Well, I'll certainly give them credit for an unconventional weapon. Those things weigh a ton. What a shitty way to die. Toilet tank lid. The murder weapon cracked with the blood of the victim on it. We'll send the body off for a forensic autopsy once you're done examining, but it looks to me like the cause of death was repeated blunt trauma to multiple areas on the head. The weapon of choice indicates a crime of passion rather than a premeditated murder. Just one hit would have been enough, meaning whoever did this had a real vendetta. Crimes like these, it's always one person. The husband or wife? See, even your intern knows, Investigator. In this case, of course, it's a girlfriend. Hmm. All the same, Bobby Cat. I think I'll keep an open mind. Alright, said that. Let's look in the toilet. Is there any poops in there? Ew, I'm not looking in there for clues. A, a successful detective never shies away from the search for evidence. 
In this case, however, anything pertinent has long been has long since gone down the drain. This is odd. Bits of quills floating in the toilet tank. Well, better collect it just in case. From quills, pieces of quills were found within the open toilet tank. So it was killed by a porcupine. That's what happened. I've got a sinking feeling about this sink. Bobby Cat, take a look at this. Feathers? So what? He's a puffin. Puffins have feathers. I know your night vision is better than your color vision, but puffins are black and white, and these are brown feathers. Ah! Soaked feathers. Two feathers not matching the victim's coloration were found in the bathtub water. Looks like you missed something, Bobby Cat. Take a look at these bruises around the victim's neck. Neck bruises. Strangulation marks the formation of the Prince Indicate Claws. There's a lot of different animals involved in killing this puffin. <laughs> Everybody had a turn killing the shit out of him. Well, well, that doesn't prove me wrong. McGuffin could have been strangled afterwards. Either way, this is one stone-cold killer we're dealing with here. Strangled and beaten to death? Not a nice way to go. pretty much done in here. Let's see any other places to click on. Derp, 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 derp. Uh, let's go back, I guess. All done. I've gathered the suspects down in the living room for questioning. I'd like to look around a bit more. Yeah, I really think I'm done. I don't see any other places to click on. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. Hopefully I can go back if... Alright. Neighbors confirmed that no one's been in and out of the house since 6 p.m. the previous night, so the murderer has to be one of his roommates or his living girlfriend. Well, you know what they say about keeping your friends close and your enemies closer? That, that's a buffalo. What is that about? this thing. Oh, it's a foxy fox. Or a caillou, whatever. Ah, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. So cute. Please calm down, miss. I'm sorry. I just know, I know everyone's blaming me, but I swear I didn't do it. I was the one who called the police. Why would I do that if I were the killer? That's a good question. Miss, can you describe your movements this afternoon and evening? Well, MacGuffin was feeling poorly, so we stayed in bed watching Netflix <laughs> together all afternoon. At around 7, he said he was going to have a bath. When he wasn't back in bed by 9, I went to go check on him. Though that's when I found him dead in the bathtub. I screamed and called the police immediately. 
Thank you, miss. You've been very helpful. 30 Kaya, the victim's girlfriend for... Uh, there was girl... Blah, 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 the victim's girlfriend for four months. Hope you feel better soon. Chicken? So it is. The stricken chicken. This is terrible. A horrible tragedy. You were close with the victim? Yeah, I've known McGuffin the Puffin since I was 16. We took pre-calc in high school together, ma'am. I am sorry to hear that. Can you tell me why anyone might have wa wanted to kill McGuffin? Yeah, I can tell you why. I think it was that good-for-nothing girlfriend of his, to be honest. I mean, she isn't even employed. Just a total bum. Uh, that's not a reason for her to be a killer. Yeah, I guess you're right. I don't know. Maybe grief is clouding my judgment at all. I think... I just think she's a real shady character. I know I've heard the two of them fighting lately. Could you tell me where you were all day, and if you heard any noise coming from the bathroom at any point? Yeah, of course, man. I, I have a final next week, so I was in my room studying until I went straight to bed at 8 p.m. I didn't hear a thing all day. Thank you for your help. Childhood victim of th friend of the victim seems to be generally saddened by his death. Final next week, so I was in my room studying until I went straight to bed at 8 p.m. Didn't hear a thing all day. That's all for now, thanks. The borderline porcupine. All right, listen up, you chumps. I'll tell you just, I'll tell you this just once, since it's obvious you couldn't pour water out of a boot if the instructions were written on the heel. Dot dot dot. It was that mink's throaty. She's a coyote. <laughs> She's a coyote, not a mink. Shut up, shut up. I saw her. That stupid tramp did it. I saw her run crying from the bathroom earlier that evening. The only pity the only pity is she didn't offer herself with that back stabbing jerk. The only pity is she didn't offer herself with that backstabbing jerk McGuffin at the same time. Why would you say backstabbing? Unless he's been backstabbed by McGuffin. And your quills were in the back of the toilet, where the back of the toilet thing came from. So, plus I think you have claws. Get the feeling there's some history between you three. History, there's history, all right. That cheating broad. As for McGuffin, well, I sure thought we used to be friends. That son of a. I'm going to stop you right there. I'm going to stop you right there for the sake of this game's E for everyone rating. <laughs> Please tell us what you were doing all day, Mr. Porcupine. Whoa, whoa, hold on there. I want a lawyer. I know my rights. I plead the fifth. I, am I under arrest? Dot, dot, dot. Well, you're very suspicious. I don't, th I don't think we're going to get anything useful from him. Suspect refused to give a statement. Once friend of the victim, the cause of their falling out was a girl claims he saw 30 Kyle fleeing from the scene of the crime earlier in the day. That could have just been anything. Goodbye. Moose. Hello, Mr. Yak. Pack yak, that's me. 
could you describe your relationship with the victim? Uh, to tell you the truth, it was non-existent. I just moved here, moved in here like a month ago. I found the room on Croak's list. I bet you're really regretting answering that ad now. Yeah, I'm going to see you about breaking the lease tomorrow. My mother always told me not to share a house with murderers. What an oddly specific lesson! Can you tell me if you heard anything between the hours of 3 p.m. and 9 p.m.? Well, let's see. I had dinner in the living room at 5. Around 7, I headed to bed. That's when I saw MacGuffin in the hallway walking towards the bathroom and said hello. My mother taught me to my mother taught me to be polite, you see. By nine I was in bed reading Fifty Shades of Hay when I heard the most blood curdling scream from the bathroom, rushed out to find Throaty on the phone with the police. That's very helpful, thank you very much, Mr. Yak. Okay, well, I mean, that's that's confirmation of Throaty's story. She went to check on him at nine, found him dead, ran out screaming, and that's what the pack yak is confirming. <coughs> so they pretty much back up each other. There's more shit to find, isn't there? Pretty sure there is more shit to find. Hmm. I'm thinking the borderline porcupine porcupine because it's just obvious. You have a nice day now. Not quite as open and shut as you thought, eh, Baba Cat? Something's a bit off, it's true. Plus, that borderline porcupine is starting to look mighty suspicious. Hmm. A jilted lover who kills the interloper and frames it on the wayward mistress? Yeah, I like it. Bobby Cat, you worry me sometimes. And that chicken's testimonial felt real forced, as if he just went into total denial mode. Odd that he never claimed to hear throaty scream, huh? Oh boy, what a crap! Oh, and what crap hack theory do you have about the pack yak? Yak, yak, yak. Nah, that book seems pretty all right. In any case, I would like. Now I'd like to investigate the area for further evi- No, oh, that's me. In any case, I'd now like to investigate the area for further evidence. Can I talk to them more? Sniff, sniff, boo-hoo. How are you holding up? It feels like my heart is breaking to a million pieces. I want to crawl into bed and listen to Lincoln Park for a year. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Why does the borderline park Upine hate you so much? Well, we used to be. Yes, I managed to deduce that. We just weren't working out, so I broke up with him. I guess he was more hung up on me than I thought, though, because he went totally crazy. Maybe I shouldn't have moved in and started seeing his roommate. It's really not the best idea I've heard. Take care, miss. Can I talk to her again? Sniff, sniff, boo-hoo. Okay, we already did that. Talk to him. What's your final next week about? Oh, um, uh, underwater mineralogy. Well, I love collecting rocks. These are feathers, the ones we found in the bathtub with the dead guy. 
Or, um, where did you get those? Well, well, you know, I've been molting lately and my feathers just keep getting everywhere. Throaty keeps complaining that they're clogging the drains. Thank you, Mr. Chicken. Of course, it could be that the chicken's in love with Throaty and killed the puffin so that she'd be available. In your statement, why didn't you claim to hear Throaty scream? Oh, I must have just forgotten, that's all. Now that I think about it, I do remember screaming. C can I change my statement? It's too late now. It's written down forever in my notebook now. I always forget to bring an eraser. <coughs> <coughs> and then the puppy showed up. You have a nice day now. Ugh, <coughs> uh, shit. Care to give your statement yet? No. How about now? No. Nice weather we've been having lately. No. Alright, I get the hint. Do you know the stricken chicken? We knew each other through MacGuffin, but we weren't really friends or anything. He seemed kind of stuffy. That's all you're getting out of me, copper. Dot, dot, dot. Good boy. Yep, same stuff. All right. Ah, hello, officers. I'm afraid you'll find the house empty of helpful clues pertaining to me. As an apology, might I offer you a glass of water instead? Well, you might be right, Mr. Yak. You'll understand that we have to look anyway. Of course, of course. I'll take a sip of that water, though. Vanilla chinchilla. Glass of water. Vanilla chinchilla. Stop using the clues folder to store your stuff. <laughs> What's your impression of your roommates in the short time you've known them? I find the borderline porcupine to be quite objectionable. He pits arguments at the drop of a hat. I avoid all discourse with him. The throaty Caillou I can converse with civilly, however, we have very little in common and I have always been a bit of a gruff bachelor. I have no real impression of the stricken chicken or the late MacGuffin the Puffin. They are both retiring fellows and kept to themselves, as my other always says a uh, gentleman should. Thank you, Mr. Yak. So where are you thinking moving to next? I'm thinking of checking out a micro-apartment or a tiny house. They're all the rage lately. Um, I hate to break it to you, but you might not be able to fit into one. You have a nice day now. It's a really old picture of the borderline porcupine and the throaty coyote. Aw, oh, they're holding hands. I guess they used to be pretty serious. The heart is a physical mistress indeed. So that backs up what he said. What's this? What's this? It's written by the deceased. Dear 30, the coyote, it pays me to do this, but here are 99 reasons why I need to break up with you. Shit, what the fuck? Wow, this is scorching hot. Good eye, the vanilla chinchilla. I'll take that for evidence. A certain letter written by the lake victim listing all the reasons why he wanted to break up. That's a lot of reasons. Shit, what's wrong with her? This notice is addressed to MacGuffin. Dear MacGuffin, despite our longtime status as friends, I am at the end of my rope. I really need 
That $15,000 that you borrowed from me several years ago, I've included a detailed invoice and interest rate below. Uh, it's from the stricken chicken. Payment due bill. A collection's notice from the stricken chicken indicating the victim owed him money. Yeah, but you can't get money from a dead person. A good life lesson never makes friendship money. Yeah. Most definitely. Why did you and the throat and throaty coyote separate? That scurvy tart! Please, Mr. Porcupine, just the facts. Facts? There's nothing remotely factual or logical about that woman's heart. She left me saying she'd met someone else. Well, did I know it was for a man I used to once call a brother. She also told me I shouted too much. Me! I think we've gone slightly deaf in my left ear. <clears throat> Explain this collections notice. Uh, hey, you can't just paw through other people's stuff. Uh, I'm an investigator, so yes, I can. Actually, legally, we absolutely can, sir. All right, I'll confess. Things between McGuffin, the Puffin, and I have been a bit tense lately. I loved him like a brother, but he was terrible with money. Plus, he was letting Throaty the Coyote stay totally rent-free in his room. That's just, uh, that's just not cool. <laughs> She's cute. <laughs> did you know about this breakup letter? <laughs> Where did you find that? In the rubbish bin. Well, well, that's where it belongs, clearly. McGuffin would never break up with me. Uh, ever. The very idea. How dare you? Besides, would a dame as good-looking as me get broken up with? I think not. <laughs> I'm the one who breaks up with others. Uh oh, investigator. Yes. The autopsy and the background checks have just come back. They check out, except for two. The 30 kind has some charges for petty theft and shoplifting. And the other? The other is, I can't believe it, the pack yak has been previously arrested on suspicion of murdering a series of roommates. <laughs> what the fuck? The pack yak has been previously accused of murder. Alright. Well then. What? Yes, although he was acquitted. And the autopsy? The cause of death is listed as strangulation instead of blunt force trauma. Uh, so you were on the money there, but look, this is just the strangest thing. The, the toxicology report indicates his blood was full of poison. Okay, so he was... strangled, beaten, and poisoned. So like I said, they, they took turns. The victim apparently suffered from poisoning, strangulation, drowning, and blunt force trauma. Okay, so four things. It's killed all kinds of different ways. Thank you, Bobby Cat. Uh, unfortunately, confers my suspicions. Please gather everyone. It's almost time for the part where I overdramatically point my finger at the killer. Are you ready to accuse the murderer? No. I need to talk to them a little bit more. And I'd like to interrogate the suspects a bit more. Sniff, sniff, boo-hoo. Okay, I guess we're done with her. Done with him. Nope, done with him. We need to talk to... Oh, come on! Why can't I talk to him? You'd think I'd be able to talk to him about the thing.
Okay, well, it's really obvious that the porcupine hit him with the toilet tank lid. Because that's where his quills are found, the back of the toilet tank. So, but that's not the cause of death. Uh, strangulation, that may have been the coyote. Just, you know, being mad at him. I don't know. I do not know. I do think it very odd that the pack yak has been accused of killing roommates before and he just happens to be at a place where another roommate has died. It apparently suffered from poisoning, strangulation, drowning, and blunt force trauma. They all have motives, because the pack yak could just be a serial killer. So he's breaking up with the coyote, owed money to the chicken, uh, betrayed his porcupine friend and took his girl away. And the pack yak is probably a serial killer. See, porcupine... Okay, it's not... It's not the chicken that strangled, obviously. I don't think the pack yak would have cause to strangle either. So that puts it down to something with claws. And the only two that would have claws would be the porcupine and the coyote. So it really comes more down to who can do everything. Uh, <clears throat> I'd say the porcupine. I've called you all here for a very important reason. This is the part where I over dramatically point my finger at the killer. I'm telling you, it wasn't me. I'm telling you, it was her. The vanilla chinchilla, I'm going to give you a chance to show off all you've learned, who was the dastardly murderer. Watch me fuck it up anyway. I still say it's the porcupine. Porcupines have clawed feet. And his quills are the back of the toilet thing, and he wielded the toilet cover top. I mean... I think it's the porcupine, fuck it. Hmm. Nearly right, the vanilla chinchilla. In fact, however... It was all of them. Well, I kind of guess that. Shit, they all took turns killing the Puffin, but... I'd say the Porcupine did the most. What? Little did you all know, each of you independently conspired to murder MacGuffin the Puffin. The first was the Pack Yak. Otherwise known as the serial killer, the Rice and Bison. See, said he was a serial killer. The Rice and Bison poisoned MacGuffin much earlier that day. As a result, MacGuffin fell unconscious in his bath. The second killer was Throaty Coyote. 
After we got some left for his bath, you went snooping and found the breakup letter in his room. Consumed by rage, you stormed into the bathroom and strangled him where he lay. In his weakened state, he could hardly put up a fight. No, no. The third was the stricken chicken. You walked in on the carnage after Throaty had fled. McGuffin was still barely alive at that point. You could have saved him. Instead, you coldly condemned him to his fate by holding his head underwater. As for you, the borderline porcupine. <coughs> Come at me, bro. I ain't scared. Upon finding McGuffin passed out in the shower, you remembered having seen Thirty run crying from the bathroom. Evilly, you decide to frame her for the crime, bashing the victim's head into a pulp. However, you failed to notice McGuffin was already dead. Your act was the most brutal, yet the most input was the most brutal, yet the most impotent. Oh. <laughs> Well, 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 I must admit, Investigator, I'm impressed. Your powers of deduction are extraordinary. Well, thank you. Before you take us away, it's my turn to ask you one last question. Dot, dot, dot. Why would I only poison MacGuffin when I could poison the entire house? What? No, I'll kill you! Oh no, Investigator, I don't feel so good. The vanilla chinchilla! The glass of water! Ah! No! And apprehend the Russian Russian Investigator, I'm calling an ambulance. It's... it's too late. You're a real scumbag, Bison. I'll see you locked up for life for this. Heh, maybe you will, maybe you won't. Take him away, boys. <coughs> <laughs> Poor Vanilla Chinchilla. I won't be sorry to be done with this case. Bobby Cat, the entire household was real toxic. Yeah! Thanks for playing the Vanilla Chinchilla. He did it for the internship credits. That's pretty silly. Can't click on any Easter eggs. Nope. Well, that was an Joystick Jerk Plays Investigator, the case of the unconventional weapon. And I'm going to play the next one next, so see you on that one.